So I have a thought experiment for you. Um, been debating this a few. Let's see how this works, shall we? So let's uh, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a government employee. Now, most everybody doesn't have the same frame of mind that a government employee would. And the reason why I say this is because most of us know that when your boss comes in and tells you to do something, you do it, lest you lose your job, right? That's kind of a normal thing for um, pretty much corporate America. I mean, within reason, right? You, let's keep it ethical. Let's not go crazy with this shit. Let's say you have a job, you're hired to do it, the boss comes in and tells you to do it. If it's outside the parameters, whatever. If it's inside, you do it, uh, whether you like it or not, okay? Now, government is different, My it has a different mindset. In a government job, your boss changes with every upcoming election, down to the judges, to uh, the elected officials, to mayors, to what have you. So when there's a transition of power from one party to another, because we have a red versus blue going on in, in this country, the power shifts and that elected official has the capacity to replace you because you don't align with their goals. So either you must adapt or you're out of a job. Your, your job, like tasks, probably don't change all that much, right? You're not going to be asked to do additional or different things. It's just that the policy, the tradition, the whatever you want to call it, the culture of that particular bubble has now shifted. And it can shift every two to four years. So as an employee, you're not an elected person. You're an employee of that position. You find yourself in a, in a particular position where you have to adapt or be removed, right? Because um, it may not be you that'll be the ax. To give a good example of this, James Comey, he was fired. It was well within the right of the president to do so. In fact, they were calling for his firing when uh, Hillary was under investigation. So when he did get fired, all of a sudden Trump's a bad guy for firing a guy that he was, yeah, he was uh, kind of a piece of work. Anyways, that's just one small example. So now imagine you're not a part of the elected body and your job isn't directly subject to the person being changed. So now you're, let's say one step below. So uh, let's, let's keep with the FBI. Let's say that you're not an FBI director, but, and you're not necessarily a manager, but you're a field agent or you're a special investigator or whatever the titles are. You're two steps removed from the top, right? In that capacity, you would have a career in this position. You would not necessarily be elected to a new position. Um, you're not subject to the transition of power because you're in this position for a very long time. And you do, you do basically, you do your, you do your job and you do it well. However, you become ideologically bent in the situation, just like everyone else in the country does. You have your favorites, you like your favorite policies, develop certain principles, whether they be valid or not. And you, you develop this over time. Now, a new president steps in that threatens your principles and ideology. You're two steps removed, but if he replaces certain pe people and he's going to clean house, as it were, like he, he wants to get rid of corruption or she, she wants to get rid of corruption, this person would have the capacity to put people in charge that would then remove you. But in your position, you've amassed a certain level of power to where you, you know how to work the system to get what you want. In a governmental system, it's very politically, ideologically oriented. In fact, getting ahead in the world is more about who you know than what you know and your ideological position within government. 
corporations are the same to a certain degree, but a lot of them function on merit unless you're a crazy ideologue like uh, Google probably would be like that. Although they probably tout meritocracy, but not so much because they're kind of crazy. Um, but now you're in this position where you're, you're potentially going to get fired. You've spent 20 plus years in this career. You've invested a lot of time, effort, and energy in massing this power, this influence. You were hoping to make this move bigger for you. Um, but power transition, things change. Everything's not going the same way that you want it to. Favors that you've done to get to your position are now coming due because the one that is asking for them was a part of the previous administration or uh, a part of the group that you're a part of. So it's in-group thing. What would you do? In talking to a few people, I've heard some say they just quit. They go to another job. They'd apply their skills elsewhere. Perfectly fine and valid. Government positions, however, a little bit different. You've amassed actual influential power at this point. Would you just give that up to go somewhere else because you don't like the environment anymore? Everybody in America has that choice, to be sure. Politics is about power and gaining power to do things that you want that benefit you. Vicariously, they might benefit other people. It depends on your altruistic nature. Um, government leaders should be servant to leaders, to say the least, but most of the time they're not. They just do what they want. They run on a policy, either you like their policy or not, and when you vote them in, they do exactly what you don't want them to. They either renege, they change, or they go full hellbore. I mean, it, it depends, right? Well, I was thinking about this. And now, if you're in a position where you can influence particular outcomes, would you not use that influence to maintain your position of power, the position of powerful allies and friends, and do what you can to topple or remove that which obstructs your power. I mean, this is this is historical, if you think about it. Um, previous people have done this throughout history. Um, some more vicious than others. Some went straight for an assassination. Others uh, tried to shun and shame people out of office. Uh, history is riddled with this kind of power struggle between the elites and the aristocrats, and things like that. So would that not still continue, even though we claim to have a system where democracy is at its finest? What happens to those that have been in this particular influence of power for 20, 30 years? Would they not then use that position to do what they want? I, I would recommend that they do. It seems only natural, considering in history, that's exactly what happened. And the reason why this thought experiment came to mind was I was thinking about Russiagate and then Ukraine and the additional claims on investigations. And now the shitstorm around Barr and him firing certain people and 1,100 federal prosecutors freaking the hell out and saying, how dare you, we're going to quit. Would it not be... The FBI, those prosecutors, and CIA, and whoever else that has amassed all this power uh, realize that when they go with false allegations, it's going to backfire. They've amassed power on false pretenses. So one of Trump's policies that he clouded was to drain the swamp. Well, now, if you're in that government position, that threatens your job. When he said that, and he meant it, that I could see why all these people were messaging each other saying, we need to get him out of office. We got to get him out now. He needs to be impeached. Other people that are ideologues jumped on that train. Tlaib, for example. 
uh, AOC is another good example, because the media had painted the narrative that he was against the people. And I'll get to the media in a second. They, they got a special uh, relationship here. And this is why people think that they're allies to the corruption and they're the enemy of the people. In fact, they are. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But getting back to this thought experiment, you would do what you could to remove that person because he now threatens your livelihood. He threatens your position of power. He's going to have you removed because he's going to have your bosses replaced. Once the bosses are replaced, they can remove anybody that seems to be not playing ball with the current administration, as is their job. In fact, that's what's supposed to happen. Some people would keep their job because in actuality, they don't give a shit who the president is. They only care about what their job was about. FBI, investigating criminals at a federal level. They only care about that shit. They could care less about everything else. But the ones that jumped on this Russiagate being witnesses to something when they weren't witnesses, they were um, hearsay, gossipers, basically. Um, and then on top of that, the Voldemort being spawned out of the CIA, things like that. It's because their power, their position was threatened by the exchange of government. This is why I think Trump's going to win another four years, because all that was proven to be false. The people that came out and did that clearly were acting in self-interest. If you think about it from their position, they didn't want to lose their jobs, their livelihood, their income, their power. What do you do? Attack the person. Now, back to the media. The media is also complicit, if not allied, in this behavior. Why? Not necessarily the Trump train thing where they can get clicks and views and whatnot, but consider this. All of their sources, the leaked footage, the leaked emails, the leaked information, the leaked whistleblower, all of this that went to the media, those people are ideologically aligned to the media people, except for Fox. So when they say sources say an anonymous source said this, anonymous Democrat said that, they're getting insider information to then spin a narrative to tell you one thing. Whether it's true or not, they don't care. A, the Trump train was a cash cow because everybody hates him. B, their informants, the media informants, are also the people trying to preserve their position of power. They knew if I leak this to, the, to here, to, to MSNBC as an example, then what would happen? It'd make him look bad. He would be stuck in a situation. If I testify against him, he can't fire me. Why? Because it could be conceived as uh, tampering with a witness, um, meddling with an investigation. I mean, the criminal, actual criminal acts. So he can't do anything. He has to wait until he's cleared of any wrongdoing. Then clean house, which is why everybody right now is freaking the hell out, which is why um, those 1,100 prosecutors that just came out said, oh my God, we're going to quit. And then he had four that actually did quit. Rightly so. They were probably ideologues aligned and helped with the Democrats and probably were the prosecutors that weren't in their right mind to take on Hillary Clinton and her clear abuse of uh, security clearance, an actual criminal act that she didn't get charged for. Because as Comey said, no prosecutor in their right mind would take up this case because they're all in the same group. Of course they wouldn't. You'd be outing yourself against the administration because it was supposed to continue with the Democrats. Right? So, if you put that, you put yourself in their position, you would do everything you can to maintain that position in power. Don't claim that you would be altruistic either. Um, you're talking about your livelihood here. You spent 30 years building up your, your position and your power only to have it stripped from you because 
a douchebag reality TV star got elected. So all that's now gone because of one man. Would you not try to remove that man? Seems only natural that you would, in fact. And the media in particular, as I said, the reason why the media are jumping on this, A, they're getting the clicks and views, they're getting sweet ad revenue, something no one should be giving them. And B, they have a vested interest because their information, the insider information, sources say, the uh, anonymous tipster, anonymous source says this, anonymous source says that, are the same people that are trying to maintain their jobs. So they will leak whatever they can to burn you. James Comey, for example, admitted to leaking to the press something that is, well, as part of the intelligence community, that's something you shouldn't be doing, just to say. And his excuse was the people needed to know. No, he was trying to preserve his job. He's trying to make Trump look bad. He's trying to put Trump in a bad situation where he could not fire Comey lest he looked like he was being retaliatory. That was the real angst behind it. He probably does hate, he probably hates him too. Don't get me wrong. He probably hates hates his ass. But at the same time, it was all selfish. It wasn't it, there was an altruistic meaning behind that. He did it so he could preserve his job. That was it. Knowing his head was probably first on the chopping block for not prosecuting the person that should have been prosecuted or recommending prosecution to the person that should have been prosecuted. He saw his head on the chopping block for being fired. So it was, it was common. So as a, as a thought experiment, those people in power, of course it was self-interest. If you, if you think about um, natural human behavior, um, the first thing you do in the Maslow's hierarchy needs is defend yourself before you defend anyone else. So if you're put in a position where your food, shelter, and clothing is now threatened because there's a guy that's about to clean the house and you're one to go because you were a part of the previous administration. You were hired on in the previous administration. You're donating to Hillary Clinton. And all this comes out. You're gone. And you know it. So you act in your own self-interest. Anyways, I thought that would be an interesting thought experiment in a couple discussions that I had over the last week and a half. I was thinking about it. The whole last four years, there have been people trying to defend and keep their jobs. Um, Trump was slow to replace people. And I think he was slow to replace people because he was recommended not to, because it might look retaliatory because it has this Russian probe going on. And so if he were to do it then, at the beginning of his presidency, it would have looked like he was burying evidence, just like Clinton where she gets subpoenaed and then has two weeks to scrub and delete everything that might incriminate her before she turns in evidence. They didn't raid her house like they did with the Russian investigation. Of course not. They should have, but they didn't. Same camp. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. But you're still not good enough.